hope for tomorrow. It's what I call a divine intersection. When the will of man and the will of God just happen to meet at the same place at the same time. The clouds will pass away, the darkness turns into light, and the tears cease, and joy comes in the morning. Angels are guarding your destiny tonight, and you have no idea how long they've been on guard. Hope for tomorrow with Reverend Jeffrey Njenga. Today I'm thinking about leadership. People need to be led. Nay, people demand to be led. Through this, people feel safe and secure when under some strong, firm and sensitive leadership. Yes, one of the greatest needs of every human being is to be led. Nations as well as individuals need to be led. Consider this statement in Judges chapter 17 verse 6. In those days, Israel had no king. Everyone did as they saw fit. This was some very unfortunate free for all situation that inevitably led to disaster. By the way, it's been observed by the people who study these things that extreme and mindless democracy leads to a free for all reality that can easily lead to disaster. And at a personal level, you feel some innate need to be led. You want to know the way from someone who knows the way. This has nothing to do with age or gender. Wanting to know the way is a human need at every stage. It shows more or less with different people, but it's there for all of us. It is certainly not a point of weakness to ask the way when you don't know or when in doubt. Perhaps that's where you are right now. You're not sure where you go from here. Take a moment, my friend, and seek the counsel of someone who might know. It might be in some simple matter of seeking to know the right road or in the big things about knowing God's will for your life. It's okay to seek the counsel of someone who may know. Above all else, friend, pray for God's hand on your life. He will surely lead you. He gives wisdom to anyone who may ask. He leads any who would seek his way. For about 40 years, the children of Israel, God's chosen people, were under the secure and strong and godly leadership of Moses as they snaked through the wilderness towards the promised land. It was an adventure like no other. These people tested the leadership metal of Moses like nothing else. Their stubbornness and lack of faith and open sinfulness would play out again and again. But Moses persevered and the Lord provided for his people all they needed again and again. Finally, they came to River Jordan on the verge of Canaan. But Moses, their leader, died. God knew these people needed another leader and he picked Joshua. Moses' deputy to take over the leadership mantle. This says a lot about discipleship as God's chosen method of raising leadership. But that is a story for another day. One leader was dead, another leader took over immediately. No leadership vacuum at all. God asked Joshua to step forth and lead his people. This is what the scripture says. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give them to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised Moses. This territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great uh, river, the Euphrates, or the Hittite country, to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Now those who are familiar with this biblical story know that this journey to the land promised to Abraham by God long ago began in Exodus chapter 9 when the fugitive Moses presented himself to Pharaoh in Egypt and thundered the message of the living God, let my people go so that they may worship me. The flight that night ended the slavery of the Jews in Egypt that had lasted over 400 years. The trek in the wilderness under the leadership of Moses would take about 40 years. 
There are some important observations about leadership to make from this text. There is a clear transition to begin with. One leader has left by death in this case, and another one Joshua has taken over. The Lord does not leave any doubt as to who is in charge. Joshua takes over the mantle immediately Moses dies. They say that nature abhors vacuum. Any leadership situation must not have a vacuum. The period of transition is very delicate, as you may know, and can result in disaster if not handled properly. There must not be a leadership vacuum in the family or business or even in the nation or any other situation. There must be a clear leader in every situation. There are clear instructions on the, on the task as at hand as well. Joshua would lead the people to cross over the Jordan River and into the promised land. Get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give them. God said, people must be led to some specific direction or to undertake some specific task or project. You must lead the family and whoever else is under you to a definite place. The Lord would give them the land. He clearly delineated the land he will give them. Yes, the Lord has given us his promises. Discover those promises and claim them. Joshua had the assurance of the Lord that he will be successful in his endeavor to lead the people. This is what the Lord told him. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. How assuring. But why is this important? You see, when the leader has the assurance from the Lord, he gained strength to do great exploits for the kingdom. Having the assurance of the calling of the Lord in leadership is the greatest asset for the leader. Now, let me ask you and tell me, who called you into leadership? You must clearly hear the voice of the Lord calling you into a given direction. It makes all the difference to know that you are called by the Lord God of heaven to a certain direction. It's so comforting to know that you are not alone in the journey. The Lord promises to be with Joshua always, never to leave or forsake him, and that's very comforting a reality for Joshua. But the Lord makes one request of the new leader. He tells him, be strong and courageous. You see, leadership of oneself with clarity and strength or even leading others is not for the faint-hearted. It calls for great sacrifice. Sometimes it leads to extreme strain and stress. Leadership is much more than the benefits therein. True leadership calls for incredible strength of body and mind and spirit. Leadership can be very lonely. What kind of a leader are you, I should ask you? Are you sure of your calling? This is Hope for Tomorrow with me, Geoffrey Chenga. Today thinking about leadership. Stay with me. Hope for Tomorrow with Reverend Geoffrey Njenga. But even though leadership is crucial, the terrain today is barren and bleak every which way you look. Take the family for instance, the father figure. God's choice for the leader in the family has been diminishing terribly over the years. Modernity has ushered in what has been referred to as the emancipation of the woman with undue emphasis on personal freedom and equality. The new creed is what man can do, the woman can do even better. No doubt a lot has changed for the better for the modern woman, but given the human tendency for extreme behavior, this emphasis has all but reversed God's order of things in the family, thus causing chaos and great damage to the family. The unbalanced emphasis on the girl child has inadvertently led to some disoriented boy child, thus worsening the problem of leadership in the family even further. You know, there is really nothing wrong in lifting the girl child, but the pendulum has simply swung far on the other side, leaving the boy child largely neglected. The sad implication on family leadership is obvious to anybody who may care to look. The reality of the disoriented male in the family has been linked to antisocial tendencies such as alcoholism, substance abuse and domestic violence and general purposelessness on the part of the male person. Leadership at the political level is faced with severe challenges as well. The world scene suffers the diminished leadership profile with politicians 
and not statesmen taking the frontal role. You know only too well that the statesmen think about the next generation, while politicians are more concerned about personal gains and the next election. Thus, the world totters dangerously as a man groping in darkness for lack of leadership as we worship so-called democracy, leading to some very ridiculous things. I mean, what do you make of the recent events in the mighty USA, the only superpower in the world, and their current leader, unashamed and unrepentant about many things which concern very many other people? What do you make of a man who gloats about all the wrong things in the name of democracy, getting the most powerful office on earth? What do you really expect? And near a home, the situation is not any better. Good leaders are too few, and they are far in between. Rather, you have a plenteous supply of power-hungry and greedy individuals masquerading as leaders who habitually steal from their people and stash the cash abroad. Of course, the sorry state of the continent has little to do with resources but lack of good leadership. Even near a home in this country, the sorry state of leadership is there for all to see. What do you make of the daily reports of theft of public funds? What do you make of the growing gap between the rich and the poor? What do you make of the leadership that conspires to destroy the education system and the future of its own children? How do you explain it to yourself that a father or mother can actually assist the children to steal at the examinations and celebrate with gusto when the false results finally come out? Have we sunk beyond help? No, not really. We have seen the refreshing work of one man who rose to the occasion and the minister is cleaning the education system and reversing the evil and dangerous trend. And the world of business is in trouble also, with the, is the entire focus trained on the short-term profits. All the eyes are on the results in the next quarter, not the products for the next generation. Under some unrelenting and crushing pressure to show results now to the owners of capital, the business leader will do anything to prove his worth, including creative accounting and thinly veiled crooked business practices. Consequently, the world of business suffers regular financial crises and some increased loss at the personal level, as otherwise promising careers are destroyed as they are caught in this mess. Observers think the worst is yet to come. The situation in the church is not any better with regard to leadership. The church, the salt and the light of the earth, has increasingly lost its taste and become dimmer. The leadership of the church has generally adopted the tendencies of the business world. Material gains have taken the place of the spiritual leadership for many church leaders. The church is all but some corporate business with little spiritual impact. In a very dark world, it's mainly about personal gratification there. True and conscientious godly leaders are too few and far in between, and the house of worship is by and large a veritable den of robbers. The salt has lost its taste, and the church will struggle to offer alternative and credible leadership to the faithful and to a lost world. The situation is really bleak. But King David raised a question there in Psalm 11, which you and I might want to consider if we will find hope and direction in this quagmire, at least for ourselves. The psalmist asked the question, when the foundations are being destroyed, what can the righteous do? Our hope is in what the man says next. And he says, the Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord is on his heavenly throne. Our hope lies in the Lord God of heaven. Yes, ours is not to fret because of all the evil we see around and the false leaders strutting on stage. Friend, ours is to raise our eyes to heaven and to trust the only true leader, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the man Jesus Christ. That relays our hope and the light of the world. Look to the good shepherd, my friend, the good shepherd of our soul. Jesus is the greatest leader that was ever given. There's no other greater than him. At a time when the son of Jesse, David, needed a leader, he looked to his heavenly father and wrote Psalm 23. This psalm has been the help and comfort, 
comfort of many over the ages. If you, like me, are disillusioned by what you see all around and are looking for some authentic leadership, Psalm 23 gives the real source of true leadership. I wonder whether you've ever considered a heavenly father to lead you. You see, all other leaders will let you down. Let me tell you, that's a bankable truth. There is only one who will never let you down. This is Hope for Tomorrow with me, Geoffrey Jenga. Today, thinking about leadership. Stay with me. Hope for Tomorrow with Reverend Geoffrey Jenga. King David knew where to look for leadership. He looked to one greater than himself. He looked to the son of David to guide him. See, no one can light a candle to the leadership of the Son of Man. As David considered the leadership of the Lord of God of Heaven, he penned Psalm 23. This psalm is worth a study for every person seeking authentic leadership. What a great leader is our God. And this is what David said about uh, the Lord as the leader. The Lord is my shepherd, I will not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What are we to begin? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. This is a powerful picture of the sheep and the shepherd. The picture of the tender leader and the led, the needy and the provider, the vulnerable and the strong. The sheep are safe and secure when under the care of a good shepherd. Are you looking for a leader, my friend? Be wise like David. He did not look to those around him or even his own resources, though he was rich and powerful. He raised his eyes to the heavenly realm, to his God. The Lord promises to provide to those who will put their trust in him. So let go, friend, and let Jesus in, and he will replace anxiety with peace and hope and joy. You will lie down and sleep because he will take care of you. Green pastures and quiet waters is a picture of satisfaction, of rest and peace. Peace and rest is what you need right now above all else. You see, some of us live under extreme energy. The Lord may once in a while allow sickness to nail you down so that you lie down and sleep and get some rest. You may also lose your job to slow you down a little. See, allow the Lord to make you rest a while. Perhaps it's been a long and frustrating walk for you. You are hot, you are tired. Friend, take a moment and drink from the word and you will be refreshed. Our God will also create opportunities for you to be refreshed. Yes, he will make you lie down, so rest a while. The psalmist goes on to say, even though I walk through the the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You see, the world has become increasingly dangerous, and there are many things which cause you to fear. You think you lose your job, or you're jobless anyway, and you are afraid. How do you meet your needs? How do you face tomorrow? The rising level of insecurity makes you so afraid. The fear of the unknown. This is what the Good Shepherd say through prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 41. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Then the psalmist says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. My cup overflows. Friend, this is abundant provision. See, the Lord will make you succeed in spite of the enemies all around you. Yes, it is the Lord who determines your starts and your stops. It's not your enemies. Remember, if you say, The Lord is my refuge, and you make the Most High your dwelling, no harm will overtake you no disaster will come near you, your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. That is in Psalm 91. So fear not. He anoints my head with oil. 
Oil in the scripture is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. The oil is used to consecrate or set apart those God has chosen. Yes, you are special because God has chosen you and set you apart for his own use. What a comforting thought. The Holy Spirit is a source of power for the believer. He is the counselor, the comforter for those who will trust and follow him. The Holy Spirit enables you to remain calm even in a crisis. In the paths of righteousness for his name's sake, David knew it and we too know it. We have the tendency to go astray. David got mixed up with someone else's wife. He committed adultery with her. He even killed the husband. And that's how far things can get. But the Lord was available to lead David. And you know what? The Lord is available to lead you in the right paths. Yes, prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the Lord I love. Just like that one sheep that wanders away from the flock and gets in trouble. You and I do get in trouble every so often. But there is something beautiful and reassuring in that line. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Meaning what? There is a name greater than my own. You know, every true believer bears the wonderful name of God. Yes, the Lord will. The Lord will protect his name against anything and everything. You know the royalty is concerned about their lineage and the royal blood must be protected. And you know the Lord God of heaven has a name to protect in me. He will therefore lead me away from trouble. This means I am his project. How so good and reassuring. The psalmist says, Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Lord promises to lead you and me and meet our needs, and he will. He says this of himself, I am the good shepherd, and accept his leadership. Let God lead you, and you will be able to lead other people as well. By the way, the issue in our lives is not getting enough to meet our needs, but greed. The Lord Jesus Christ is the only one who can cure greed, and he can lead me where I will be have contentment. So even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. David knew what it, what it meant to experience danger. He spent a lot of his time before he ascended to the throne, running away and hiding from King Saul who wanted to kill him. But his source of security was the Lord God of heaven. So I know not what or who is chasing you to destroy you, but you can run to the Lord Jesus for true security. Why? Because the name of the Lord is a strong tower, the righteous run to it and are safe. The Lord used to instrument to take care of David, the rod of discipline, when the man strayed away from the right path, like when he committed adultery with Bathsheba, the Lord chastised him. David would not rest until he surrendered and confessed his sin to God. Oh yes, the shepherd used the rod to discipline the wayward sheep. If the lamb in old Palestine, if the lamb constantly wandered away from the flock, the shepherd used the rod to break its leg. He then set the wounded leg to heal, and for the next three weeks or so, the shepherd would carry the sheep on his shoulders. In that period, the two built a very strong bond of love. You know what? Perhaps the reason you are wounded in whichever way is to draw you back to the Good Shepherd. So enjoy the company and the fellowship of love now when you are out away from the crowd. The shepherd also carried the staff, a long stick with a crook at the end. He used that instrument to retrieve the sheep that may fall in the crevices. And our Lord God will use his staff to extract you when you get in trouble. That staff may be your pastor who sincerely loves you or a brother or a sister or your wife or whoever that cares enough to get you out of trouble. They will speak the truth with love. The Lord provided for David in spite of those who did not like or indeed wanted to kill the man like Saul. David not only survived the numerous attempts on his life, but he ultimately ascended to the throne and prospered. And you know what? You too will be all right. The Lord is with you. This is Hope for Tomorrow with me, your friend Jenga, today thinking about leadership. Stay with me. Hope for Tomorrow with Reverend Jeffrey Jenga. 
So how can you develop a close walk with the Savior as you allow him to lead you and make you the kind of a leader that you are meant to be? In other words, how can you become an effective leader to yourself so that you can in turn lead other people who have been entrusted to you? There are many things you can do, but let me suggest that the, the place to start is by getting to know the Lord Jesus Christ personally as your Lord and Savior. David said, the Lord is my shepherd. As a matter of fact, the whole psalm, as in so many other places in the Bible, David refers to and takes great comfort in a personal relationship with God. It was always a father-son relationship. But how do you become a child of God? This happens when you, as an act of your faith, accept the free gift of salvation offered by Jesus Christ and receive him in your heart as your Lord and Savior. If that happens, should that happen, when that happens, then you are a child of God. This is not about religion or doing good things or serving in the church. Friend, there's no other way to God other than through Jesus Christ. The invitation is to all and the decision is individual and personal. You are a child of of your parents because you were born into that family. You become a child of God through Jesus Christ. That's how you become a child of God and it can happen anytime, anywhere, including right now. When this happens, the exciting and adventurous life of faith begins as a good shepherd gets involved in your life. He promises never to leave you or forsake you. Secondly, if you truly desire to build a strong relationship with God, you must create time to talk with each other. You know, any meaningful conversation and relationship involves careful listening and talking, not to the other, but with each other. Those who will create a strong and close relationship must of necessity spend time together. In reading the word regularly and consistently, you allow yourself to listen to God. Then you can talk to him in prayer and praise and worship and in obedience. The scripture is the lifeline for every believer. This is what the Lord told Joshua when he took over the leadership from Moses. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Obedience is everything in our walk of faith. Thirdly, learn to be still in the presence of the Lord. In these modern times, we tend to be too busy. Every moment, every hour is accounted for. We eat in a hurry and travel fast and even speak fast so as to get to the next activity. Not so for any intimate relationship. It requires time and more so time of quiet. We must learn to be quiet before God and just allow him to sort out whatever needs his attention in your life. We read in scripture, be still and know that I am God. You will hear a small voice saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. Sit still every so often, my friend. Move away from the crowd and allow the Lord to speak to you. Fourthly, seek unqualified obedience. You see, the word of God is not given to satisfy our curiosity, but to change our lives. This will only happen when we learn prompt obedience. When Abraham was told by God to offer his son as a sacrifice there in Genesis 22, we read in the scripture, early the next morning, Abraham was on the way to the mountain to do just that. That's what God requires of each one of us, his children. Always remember, obedience is better than sacrifice. Another thing which will help you develop as a leader is to push the boundaries out. Get out of your comfort zone. Learn to trust God to do greater things in and through your life. Perhaps you know this already. Muscles of the body grow with use and so is our faith. As you exercise faith and experience God's faithfulness and provision, your faith grows and you increasingly become the leader you are meant to be. Finally, do not fear to stand alone for what you believe in. Leadership 
will every so often demand that you stand up when everyone is sitting or sit when everything in you is screaming that you stand the crowd is often mindless and has very little to offer to anyone who desires to be a leader and as i come to the end of our time together allow me a moment to underline my message today firstly leadership is a greatest need among humanity today every leader must lead themselves first before they lead others this order of things is often reversed with tragic consequences secondly those who would provide great leadership must surrender themselves to the greatest leader the lord jesus christ david was wise to do so the world suffers a great leadership deficit because men and women are often reluctant to surrender to god thirdly the process of good leadership begins with a personal walk of faith by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Fourthly and finally, if you miss the way by trying to lead without the Lord God of heaven, friend, come back. Kneel and pray to God to help you and you can do that right now. This brings us to the end of our time together. You've been listening to Hope for Tomorrow with me, Jofrin Jenga. Today thinking about leadership. God willing we shall be together again next Sunday. In the meantime, should you want to get in touch with me, I'm on 0722839074. Goodbye and God bless.